everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to show you how to change the spark plugs in a 2014 Ram 1500 with a 5.7 liter V8. Again, uh, we're kind of in a transitionary period where our new shop isn't ready just yet, but we're going to get there and I will make a complete new shop tour when it is all finished. So I appreciate everyone sticking around uh, through our transitionary period and I promise better things are coming. So this spark plug job is a little daunting because there are two plugs per cylinder, which means you're gonna need to buy 16 plugs in case you hadn't realized that before you got started. You're gonna need 16 of them and the link is down below in the description to those plugs as well as any special tools or dielectric grease or NICs you might need. Now I show later exactly how to change uh, both plugs for cylinder number one because it was the most photogenic, easiest to get to, and you could actually see what I'm doing. The plugs on the passenger side of the engine are pretty easy to get to and don't require too much manipulation to get out. However, the plugs on the driver's side where the brake booster is are pretty difficult and there's definitely a trick to getting them out. So I will go over that trick later on in the video, but the process is exactly the same as far as you know removing the coil pack and the fundamentals of getting the plug out and putting it back and the torque specs and all that jazz. But there is a trick to getting plugs uh, four, six, and eight out. And I will show you exactly how I worked out how to do it. I can't imagine how else you'd do it just because the firewall is so mashed against there and so is the brake booster and a couple other things. And it is quite the challenge. I will admit you that right away because of the way the truck is designed. The engine is pushed pretty far back into the firewall. So getting tools in your hands and the spark plugs in and out of there is pretty tricky. So there is a bit of a trick to it. And again, I will show that. Doing this repair yourself ensures the repair is done correctly and all the plugs get changed. I can't tell you how many times people will take their car or truck into a dealer or a mechanic of some kind and they will only do the easy to get to plugs. I will find that sometimes on friends' cars where they had a transverse mounted V6, they only do the front three plugs and forget forget to do the back three plugs that are hard to get to. And there are six plugs on this engine that are super tricky to get to that a shop might just skip and say they did it. So that way they are pocketing their money. I'm unsure how many hours this job pays, but I'm willing to guess it's a fair amount and it is in their best interest to not replace those plugs. So doing it yourself ensures that those plugs are replaced and you are getting the most performance and reliability out of your truck with those plugs being replaced. The plugs aren't too expensive and you don't really need that many crazy special tools to get this job done. You take this to a shop or a dealer, you're probably paying close to 500, 600 bucks to get this done. And it, this is not $600 worth of work. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so to get to our spark plugs, we need to remove this plastic engine cover. In order to remove that, we need to remove our intake tube. And what we can do is grab an eight millimeter socket, loosen up this hose clamp. And we can remove our mass airflow sensor. There's a little safety got to depress with your thumb on the bottom. There we go. You just push on this right here and wiggle her off. And then we need to remove that hose clamp right there. Also a eight millimeter. All we have to do is loosen that hose clamp up. There we go. Don't forget your socket. And we can carefully remove our intake tube. There we go. And before we go any further, it's a good idea to take a shop towel or some sort of clean you know, terry towel or something and put it in the throttle body just so you don't get any kind of debris down there and then when you start it, you forget about it and then uh, it ends up in your engine, it's no good. So then we can remove our plastic engine cover. And you just pull straight up with it like this and just shimmy it off like that, perfect. So we can remove this tube off of our air box and that's gonna make it into our spark plugs on our left bank a little easier and you can just bend that right out of the way for you. So what we can do is flick up our safety just like that and then on the part where my thumb just is you can depress that. Mm. So what you want to do on this guy is press on that part right there and you can see that it works this tang so you can push that down and pull it straight off. Sometimes you can wiggle her off Get that connector out of the way. We don't need it here anymore. Then we can remove those bolts. Alrighty, so we can grab a 10 millimeter socket and remove our bolts that hold down our coil pack. And they're not on super tight. Remember that when you're tightening them. 
There we go, there's one. And there is number two, both bolts out, very cool. So before we remove any kind of coil packs, we're gonna go ahead and get some compressed air. And blow all around there, make sure there's no dirt or debris that's gonna fall into our spark plug well. Now when you're removing this coil pack, it's really easy to tear them. So how you wanna remove them is just straight up and out the exact angle that it's coming out at on the spark plug well and just remove it very gently. Inspect it for damage, but these look totally fine, so we're gonna reuse them. So we're gonna grab our 5 8 spark plug socket, we're gonna put it down our spark plug well, and make sure it is fully seated on the spark plug nut. You'll know because you won't be able to turn this freely by hand. Make sure it is fully down on there, you don't want it being half on there, and then rounding off that nut, that would be no fun. We're going to put a ratchet on there and always use hand tools when removing a spark plug, never ever power tools. And we can begin removing this. Oh yeah, this is coming out awesome. So once it gets loose enough, you don't even need the ratchet anymore. You can just do it gingerly with your fingers. And once you're sure all the threads have cleared, we can remove our plug. Here's our plug, very cool. Remove that from our socket. We can do the other one for cylinder one because it is two plugs per cylinder. Alternatively, you can do each plug one at a time if you're really scared about something getting inside of the combustion chamber or something like that. That is also perfectly acceptable. I just like doing them one cylinder at a time. Once we're sure those threads will clear, there we go. There's number two. Alrighty, so here are our stock plugs. They are NGKs. So I'm going to put NGKs in them. There's our part number, and the link is down below in the description. What we're going to do while we're over on our workbench is take it out of the box. Oh, well, that's a good sign. It has this nice sheath on there. And what you want to do with a gloved hand is go around the porcelain of the plug and see if you can feel any kind of cracks or brims or something. As if it's cracked, don't even bother putting it in the truck or car. Don't even bother. But this one feels amazing. And then we're going to check our gap too, and it should be at 35 thousandths. Oh yeah, it's just before 35 thousandths. It's probably like 33. I'm going to call that good enough. And then we're going to get some anti-seize on the threads. So we can grab some anti-seize on the end of our finger and put it on our threads. Uh, link down below in the description. Maybe a little more than that. There's a lot of threads here. There we go. Looking good. So with anti-seize, you just don't want it on the strap or anywhere on the sparking surface. What we can do is take the spark plug and gingerly, now this is where most people crack your, the plug is bonking it on the way into the spark plug socket. So just very gingerly drop that in. Oh yeah, just like that. Perfect, now we can go put this in our engine. So here's where we're working for reference. I'm gonna zoom in. We can drop gingerly now, gingerly. Drop our spark plug down in its well and just use your fingers and feel the threads going in, okay? Don't force them. If it gets tight, like real tight all of a sudden, that means you're cross-threaded, go ahead and unthread it and take it out. You do not want to cross-thread this. That is the wrong idea. So we get these, okay, so it just got snug on me. Perfect, now I can grab my torque wrench. So we're gonna set our torque wrench to 13 foot-pounds. Almost there. Perfect, 13 foot-pounds. And then again, we're going to gingerly, gingerly now, remove our spark plug socket off the porcelain. Very cool. So we can do the second spark plug for number one here. Again, gingerly putting it down in there, making sure we're not cross-threading nothing. Grab our torque wrench again. Here we go, on to 13 foot-pounds, and gingerly remove our spark plug socket. Awesome, so what we're gonna do now is take some dielectric grease, link down below in the description, and we're just gonna spray some 
into, I'm just gonna squirt some into our coil pack wells there, perfect. And we can just slide that back on our spark plugs. Oh yeah, perfect. And we can replace our bolts. All right, and we can replace our bolts. Making sure those go into the valve cover. I don't tighten one all the way down, just get them started and then we can start tightening these bad boys down. There we go. Very cool. Then I'm just gonna tighten these wrist tight. They do not need to be very tight on there. Uh, if I find a torque spec, I will let you know. It's probably like seven. Very light indeed. There we go, wouldn't go any tighter than that. And then we can grab our connector, put it down onto our coil pack, until you get that nice gratifying click, then put the safety back on, again, nice gratifying click, and boom, cylinder one is done. Now, for the rest of the plugs, I know I'm gonna get the comment, why didn't you show how to put the other plugs out? They are exactly like this, but a little more challenging because it's going to be your hands mashed into the back of basically where the firewall is that way on the passenger and driver's side. And it's gonna be a little challenging. If there is something you need to get out of the way and you need to unbolt, I will show that. But if I have smooth sailing, you know that you don't need any other additional steps and you can just do them exactly how I've done cylinder number one here. So we're over here on my workbench where it's it's a little bit easier to show you what I mean by removing plugs four, six, and eight. Now, let's pretend that this paper towel tube that I've trimmed up a little bit is a spark plug well. It's a little bit longer, but, and quite a bit uh, wider in diameter, but use your imagination. So pretend this is a spark plug well. And this new spark plug is your old spark plug, so that's down in there, and that is, you know, snugged in place. Difficult to get out, but not impossible. So here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. Normally, you'd be able to just maneuver your spark plug socket with the extension preloaded, and you'd fish it down in there and put it on top, and then you'd be able to, you know, feel it out, and then you would attach your ratchet to it, and boom, you're in business. But you can't do that on that bank of the engine because this will bonk into the firewall, it'll bonk into the brake booster, you know, so basically there's no way to get this assembled in and out. It's not possible. If, if you have a different trick, let me know. But uh, this is what I found worked. And obviously I can't show you on the truck because all you'll see is uh, my hands in darkness. So you got the spark plug down in there. You know, and it's buried into the firewall. So what you wanna do is grab your regular spark plug and just drop it down in there. Now, on my example, you can see that it didn't land on the plug, but luckily for us, the spark plug well is much tinier in diameter. So once you just kinda drop it down in there, It'll more or less look like this, but in a much tighter, more confined spot. So then you go, okay, well, where does that get me? Well, that gets you just enough clearance to where you can fish the extension around like this, and it's important to have about a four inch long extension, and it's really important to have one that maybe doesn't have so much pressure on the release ball here, or the catch ball. And then you feel around down there until you think you're on your spark plug socket, like that, and then push down on it like that. Now, you can take your fingers and rotate it. There we go. See, it wasn't on the spark plug perfectly like that. So it was kind of like this, and what I had to do, the spark plug isn't gonna move because it's not broken loose yet, is just kind of feel it around and rotate it, so feel it out until, there we go, you can feel the spark plug socket get on the spark plug nut, like that. And then, it'll look kinda like this. It'll just be visible outside of the spark plug well. And then you can hook your ratchet up and break it loose. Okay, you've broken it loose. Fantastic. So what'll happen is it'll just seesaw back and forth without, without triggering the ratchet because it's too loose. And what you can do, is grab a standard screwdriver and place it here between the extension and the ratchet and then just twist to get that ratchet out of there. And then it should just come out by hand 
just with your fingers like this, just keep spinning, keep spinning, keep spinning, keep spinning. And then once you're sure it's out, pull it out. But I can hear you saying it's going to bonk against the firewall and you're totally right. There is no way to get this out of that spark plug well as an assembled unit. So what do you got to do? Well, you got to bring it up to like this. It's a little harder because uh, you're going to have to hold on to the spark plug well essentially, but you, you hold it like this. Got that out of the way. And then you grab your standard screwdriver and basically doing this for instructional purposes, you probably won't be able to hold it just like this, so you might have to do it like this where you can't see anything. You're going to grab your standard screwdriver and push your spark plug socket off of the extension. And then it's going to slide down to the bottom of the spark plug well and you're going to go, great, now how do I get that out? That's where this tool comes to save the day. This is technically called a magnetic pickup tool, link down below in the description, of course. I like to call it a slinky do magnet. So you send the slinky do magnet down in there, huzzah, and you get the whole thing. How neat's that? That took a little bit of problem solving and is definitely more advanced than a regular spark plug job for sure. And then to put it back together, you just do it the reverse. So take your spark plug socket, load it up. You can even load your slinky do magnet up with it and gingerly, you know, drop it down in there and then fish a screwdriver out with it. I found that it's actually not that big of a drop, so what I did is I just used my finger, kind of going along with it, and then just slowly let it down there. It only dropped maybe half an inch until it's at the bottom of the well. And then you just grab your extension, feel it on there. Now look, you don't have to like press the extension on there to get it to work. You can just have it on there before the catch or the safety, that little ball there activates. You don't necessarily need it in place. So if you have an extension that's maybe missing one of these or maybe is really worn and it's really easy to take the socket off, maybe that's the way to go. So what you can do, or at least what I did in my case, is I used the extension, fished it down in there, just had it fit on there, and what I did was I turned it to the left a little bit just to make sure that it is centered on the threads of the head for the combustion chamber, and then I slowly span it clockwise to feel the threads. Now, if the threads aren't going on and it feels weird or it feels tight way too quick, take it out. It's cross-threaded, 100%. So take it out, feel it back around, and then you'll feel it. It'll kind of get a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter, and it'll feel good. The threads will feel excellent going in there. And then, once the threads are on properly, uh, you can push the extension fully on if you want, or not. It doesn't matter too, too much. And then, you can continue tightening it until it is at full finger tightness you can do. And then you grab your ratchet or torque wrench. And then you can tighten it down just like you normally would. Ooh, nice and tight. Now, what you want to do, this part's really important because you don't want to crack the porcelain that's on there. And, you know, how do you do that? Well, again, same trick. You very gingerly Pry your ratchet off. If you can do this with your fingers, I'm impressed. I have to use the screwdriver. And then you're going to feel it kind of go bunk off of the spark plug. So I'm going to simulate that. Bunk off the plug so the plug is in its well. But then you're bonking against the firewall. That's no good. So again, you want to gingerly, you can even have your magnet in place to catch your spark plug socket like this. Except it'll be down in the well. Sorry, I don't have three hands. And then you just push it off like that. And then your magnet prevents it from falling back down in further into the well. Now, if for some reason you couldn't negotiate the magnet and the spark plug at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. It'll kind of just look like this down in there. However, you do risk cracking your porcelain and that is absolutely disastrous. You want to avoid that. So if you couldn't do that, just send your slinky to magnet to receive your spark plug socket, and then you'll have your spark plug nice and mounted in its hole, and then you can put on your ignition boots with the new dielectric grease, torque down the coil pack, and boom. That is how you replace all of the spark plugs on uh, 4, 6, and 8. You have to do it that way. I honestly couldn't figure out any other way to do it. This was the what I figured the quickest and most cleverest. I have a bunch of different, uh, you know, angles and swivels and fancy pan sockets and this and that, but this was the best way to do it. 
standard screwdriver, ratchet, slinky do magnet, about a four inch long extension. You're, you're going to need different length extensions, you know, different, you know, bubbles and different contours of the, the car and the firewall. Sometimes a six inch long extension is better, sometimes less, sometimes more. I, I found this one was pretty much the perfect length. So a four inch long extension is kind of the Goldilocks of this repair, uh, I noticed, because it, it ends up being pretty much flush with the valve cover, which is uh, really nice and handy and gives you plenty of room to articulate a ratchet or a torque wrench. So. That's how that's done. There's the trick. All right, 16 plugs later, we're all finished. Didn't run into too many problems. I will go over a little trick I found uh, to get to those pesky plugs on uh, cylinder number eight. Actually, it's eight, six, and four that are quite the troublemakers. So we can plug our EVAP tube back in. Alrighty. So when you are replacing this engine cover piece, you see those two little holes right there and right there. That's where these prongs, here and here, slide into. Slide this back in there. Aim for the two prongs. You can peek down in there. Make sure it lines up. Make sure it goes funk funk, just like that. And then we can remove our terry towel for our throttle body. There we go. Now we can grab our intake tube and replace this bad boy. Awesome. We can grab our 8mm socket, put it on the hose clamp, and tighten it down. Then we can tighten that 8 millimeter hose clamp down. And you don't want these crazy Hulk tight or anything, just snug is fine. Mm, that's perfect. Plug our mass airflow sensor back in, just goes straight on. Until you hear it click, like that. Make sure it doesn't come back off, which it doesn't. And we can tighten this 8 millimeter hose clamp as well. And again, you just want this snug, not crazy tight. And there we go. And then we can start the truck to make sure all the plugs work. And there we go, no misfires, working perfect. So that is how to replace the spark plugs on a Ram 1500 uh, 5.7 from 2014. Um, this is a fairly advanced spark plug replacement. This is one of the trickier ones. Not the hardest though. Uh, usually those transverse mounted V6s where you have to take an intake manifold off, those are what I would consider to be the hardest. Um, but this was no cakewalk either. So if you are a little intimidated by this job, maybe take it to a professional, but if you think you can handle it, I promise you it's the juice is worth the squeeze and your effort will be rewarded. Thank you so very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.